You are listening to Mining Stock Education, where you'll learn from the top leaders in the natural resource sector and uncover quality mining investment opportunities. Your gold is still building the handle on this super bullish cup and handle pattern. You know, eventually when gold, I mean, when it, when it breaks to a new all-time high, it gets to 2100 above that point. Um, I think that's the, the setup is beautiful. That will be the biggest move that we've seen since the late 70s. But that but could unlike, be two years away in your current oh, yeah. understanding, right? Right. Yeah. I'm sorry to babble on, but unlike a lot of gold people, I, I see nothing in the charts that tells me that's like six or nine, in the fundamentals at the same time, that, that that's like six or nine months away. I would think that move is at least a year away, you know, maybe two years away. Thanks for tuning in and welcome back. I'm Bill Powers. And in today's episode, we're going to be speaking with Jordan Royburn of thedailygold.com. If you follow the precious metal sector, you already know Jordan. He covers uh, the gold price primarily from a technical standpoint. But today we're going to be talking about where is gold headed from a fundamental standpoint. So Jordan, welcome back onto the show. I've heard some interviews with you lately and you seem a little more bearish. So kind of break down your current um, expectations for the gold price and share with us the fundamentals that undergird that expectation. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for having me back, Bill. I think as far as, I mean, I'm bearish in a sense that a lot of gold people are always talking about it's ready to move up, break out, and skyrocket soon enough. And so I, I don't hold that view yet. I think, um, you know, big picture, uh, if we look at the fundamentals, uh, a lot of the big moves in gold over time, or at least turning points, have come with shifts in Fed policy. And interestingly, it's been either way. Like, there's been periods where they stop hiking and they start cutting. That has been a major catalyst for gold. And at the same time, when you're in an inflationary environment, or it doesn't have to be an inflationary environment, uh, when the Fed, uh, when they do their first rate hike after a while, they start a new hiking cycle. And so that also, uh, that's actually been better than the reverse for gold. You tend to get, gold tends to at least pop in that scenario. If it's been declining into that uh, first rate hike, then gold tends to pop. So there's a lot of examples of that. I think we talked about that in the last interview. So fundamentally, gold is kind of stuck right now because the market thinks that, or the market rather, the market doesn't think inflation is going to accelerate. And you know, the Fed's talking about tapering. If they say, oh, we're going to hold off on the tapering, yeah, that could be a short-term positive for precious metals. But easier policy. Um, it, it's not a lasting catalyst for gold unless the Fed has room to cut rates and you see the economies rolling over and the stock market's rolling over like in 2018 and when gold's outperforming the stock market. And so we're not in that scenario. We're early in an economic expansion. It's probably going to run at least a couple more years. And so I just think in that, it, it, given everything that we're looking at, um, you know, we, we might have inflation come off a little bit in the next couple of quarters. I think looking further out, the likely catalyst in terms of Fed policy, it, it's more likely to be on the side of the Fed. You know, the economy gets a little bit better. Inflation is sticky and the Fed has to hike rates. And that's when you can see uh, a, a gold start a big move higher. And then at that point, gold will outperform the stock market because gold has really been uh, underperforming the stock market badly. I mean, that's been the huge tell over the last year. Uh, there's never been a real bull market at gold without gold outperforming the stock market for an extended period of time. So that's my big picture view. I mean, technically, uh, gold is still, you can say it's still in a correction in terms of time uh, until it breaks above 1900, both on the daily, weekly, monthly, as well as quarterly charts. That's really significant resistance. Uh, I mean, gold's had a really good move off of 1675. Um, I mean, that's really surprised me. I thought it was probably going to roll over given how the stocks are acting. And at the same time, the stocks, uh, you know, they may have bottomed a couple of days ago. I, nobody knows. I don't know for sure, but they're definitely really, really oversold and they can definitely stage a rally here. So I know that was a lot to take in, but that's, there's a lot of factors right now. And it's, it's, uh, that, that's my thinking. So it's just difficult to give you a pinpoint answer. Yes, gold's going to go way up or it's going to go down a little bit. That's just my view. Gold is still building the handle on this super bullish cup and handle pattern. You know, eventually when gold, I mean, when it, when it breaks to a new all-time high, it gets to 2,100 above that point. 
Um, I think that's the, the setup is beautiful. That will be the biggest move that we've seen since the late seventies. But that could be two years away in your current understanding, right? Right. Yeah. I'm sorry to babble on, but unlike a lot of gold people, I I see nothing in the charts that tells me that's like six or in the fundamentals at the same time that, that that's like six or nine months away. I would think that move is at least a year away, you know, maybe two years away. So do you Uh, buy into the argument that inflation is transitory then? Do you, when they point to lumber and they point to beans and the things that have come back down in the last few months, do, do you uh, agree with that or grains? Um, I think that uh, over, let's just say over the next six months or so, I think that, yes, it will be transitory. I think that's how the market is acting. Now, if we see um, commodities correct in bullish fashion and gold is able to you know, break above 1900 at some point in the next, like let's say in the next six or nine months, if that happens and commodities are holding their gains bullishly at the same time, that would be a signal that inflation would probably pick up again. But I think given the way certain markets are acting you know, here and now, I would say, I think, yeah, for the next couple of quarters, I think you're going to see uh, the rate of inflation come down. Arcana Silver is on the verge of bringing the world's highest grade silver mine into production. The Revenue Virginius Mine in Colorado has proven and probable silver reserves grading nearly 37 ounces per ton silver, with all in sustaining production costs of only $8 per ounce of silver. The mine is fully funded and permitted with infrastructure already in place and has announced production will commence in 2021. Achieving successful production should result in a significant upward share price re rating on the Lassonde curve. Arcana trades under the ticker A. AUN in Toronto and AUNFF in New York. To learn more, go to arcana.com. That's A U R C A N A.com. Okay, so let me play the other side of the argument here. You mentioned uh, economic expansion. There could be those that would argue, a gold bug would argue, Jordan, we're not in an economic expansion. In fact, small businesses don't have enough employees because they're competing against the government who's giving away free money every month. And so there's lack there. Uh, All these infrastructure bills and the trillions Trump put to the national debts and Biden's add in at an exponential rate to the national debt, faith in the U.S. government, which uh, affects the U.S. dollar. All of these things and the inflation that we experienced this year, all of these things are pointing to that this balloon is going to have to burst at some point. And there's no way I can see this lasting two more years. What would your response be to someone who would articulate a position like that? Well, I think that's reasonable, but I think we have to remember a lot of times when we're looking at these things and forecasting ahead, the economy is like a giant aircraft carrier and to, it just moves like at a glacial speed. So, uh, people, I mean, Peter Schiff is talking about things that are like he thought that were, you know, a year or two away that have turned out to be like 10 years away. So, that I don't think that view is necessarily wrong. And I mean, they could be right. Maybe the economy doesn't have two more years of growth in it. Maybe only has a year and a half. But look, at least looking at, um, you know, if, if that view, if that view was still like a year and a half to two years away, uh, that would still uh, align with my view that gold, I mean, technically and fundamentally is not ready to break yet. I mean, there's still... I think everywhere I go, and I've talked to other people, there's you know businesses are looking to hire, and um, you know e- e- even though I would agree, I don't think this is going to be a long economic expansion. I still think it's so early in the expansion uh, that there's going to be um, uh, that there's at least going to be some growth over the next year or two. So I guess the my quibble with that would just be on the timing. It's not. It's not. Uh, and we would probably find some agreement that it's it's probably not going to roll over in the next year, but maybe two or three years. So when you buy a gold stock, then you're not buying with the expectation that gold's going to be all time highs, twenty five hundred dollars, three thousand uh, dollars. You analyze a gold stock with gold being at the current price, don't you? Well, I'm looking at. Um, I, I think you know, give, given my view that we, you know, the gold price could be substantially higher two to three years from now, but not six to 12 months from now. Um, I am definitely focused more on um, if prices were fixed, you know, how much value can they add over the next 12, 18, 24 months? Because those types of companies, and for the most part, uh, for the most part, that it, it tends to be producers and developers because they're more predictable. Their outcomes are more predictable than say an exploration company. So I'm turning 
more towards producers and developers. And so my goal is I want to get in at a really good price. Hopefully it's, you know, around the bottom, uh, you know, because technicals are my bread and butter and I want to try and time it well. But, it, you know, if I can do that and you get in at a, a good price, um, you know, you can still get a pop or make a little bit of money, even if metals don't stage a huge move over the next six to 12 months. But I am looking at, okay, if this company can build a mine, it could scale, or this company's in production, they can grow this much, you know, they're doing exploration at the same time. And you look at, okay, two to three years from now, if the gold price breaks out, you know, this could be like a five, seven X or 10 bagger if they execute. So I'm looking at, uh, I'm looking at those scenarios while at the same time, if a company is, they're going to build a mine and they're increasing production, you know, if the gold price is the same 12 to 18 months from now, they've added value in that scenario. So you're not going to get killed. Whereas the problem with an exploration company is if they're not adding significant value, uh, they lose because they have to raise money every year to pay the bills. Uh, and there's dilution. Um, so, uh, I mean, that, that, those are factors you have to contend with. But at the same time, you know, at some point, if gold makes a low and it makes a huge rally, breaks above 1900, moves towards a breakout, I mean, exploration companies are, pro in that scenario, uh, in a shorter span of time, they will probably outperform. But I tend to prefer producers and developers, especially for like a two to three year period, just because the outcomes are more predictable. And they're in that time frame, they can still add a significant amount of value. The macro tailwinds of gold can really kind of cover up our mistakes as mining stock speculators when it comes to gold stocks. Great so time. like if you're not bullish on gold the next six to 12 months, are you going to be looking at other commodities perhaps within the resource sector, uh, resource stocks, you know, mm -hmm. copper, nickel, whatever, rare earths, something like that? Uh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm focused uh, mostly on gold. Um, I, Yeah, it, it's an interesting question. I wouldn't say I'm Ne yeah, I'm just not the next six to 12 months, I would kind of be lukewarm about gold. But I, I just to clarify, I do think, you know, we could put in a significant low. I mean, in terms of time, where in terms of the market could start rebounding and sustain it, I do think that that that's likely at some point in the next six to 12 months. I just don't think it's like a month or two or three months away. Okay, so Jordan, what should I entitle this interview? When I, when I create the YouTube thumbnail, what should, no, <laughs> gold's it's, not it's going a, anywhere yeah. for 12 months. What, what should it's, the title be? I'll let you name it. No, it's, it's a really good question because I, 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 I know you want to, you know, for SEO, you want to use the right headlines. <laughs> you want to get people to click. I don't know. You can say I, I make a big prediction or something, but um, I, that, that, that's tough. I'd have to think about it because, yeah, because honestly, I'm giving you a lot of nuanced and, and I want to say vague, but I've met people, they want to click on the interview and they want to be told, okay, gold's bottom, gold's going to this point, buy this stock now. That's what they want to know. Nobody wants to <clears throat> listen to the whole thing. So I, yeah, I'm sorry for, for not being <laughs> definitive. All right. Well, I'll come up with it and hopefully it'll be faithful to uh, what you shared today. If it's not, just shoot me an email. Perhaps I'll change it after the fact. Well, but uh, <laughs> now it popped, it popped in my head. I don't know if you use this, but the re the real bull market, you could say the you know the big move, the huge move in gold is still ahead of us. So the real bull market hasn't started yet because I think we talked about that last time. I mentioned it in other interviews. The real bull, like when we get to the end of this expansion, which as we said before, maybe it's only eighteen or two years away. We get to the end of this expansion. I think that's the point when gold is going to outperform the stock market steadily over the years ahead. And that's when the real bull market is going to start. I think I talked about that last time. I mean, that's when gold's going to three, four, five thousand $5,000 an ounce. It's just, I'm just saying, I don't think that move is starting, you know, now or in the next six or nine months. I could be wrong, but I mean, that's how I see it right now. But what I'm still- the, the real gold bull market is at least a year away. Is that- yeah, that's fair. I think you can okay. use that. All right. That's we got fair. our title. <laughs> well, Jordan, great to catch up with you. Thanks for sharing your uh, fundamental view on gold right now and some uh, also some insights on speculating in gold stocks. Really great to see you again. Thanks for having me, Bill. My pleasure.